Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. When it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender, work with one that has your best interest in mind. Use Rocket Mortgage for a transparent, trustworthy home loan process that's completely online at quickenloans.com slash Android. And by Bitbucket from Atlassian. Bitbucket is the Git solution for professional teams. Start your free account today at bitbucket.org slash for the code. Welcome to another episode of All About Android. This is episode 320, recorded on Tuesday, May 30th, 2017. We're your weekly source for the latest news, for the latest hardware, for the latest apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. Howdy, folks. Hello. Mr. Mr. Jason Howell, you're, yeah. you're looking quite dapper. Did you get a haircut there or something? Oh. You're, looking, you're looking good tonight. Well, you know. Are you relaxed? Uh, this is this is me in my natural habitat. I this don't is know. like you've recovered from IO, and now you're just you're you're dialed in I, to podcasting. I've whisked IO in into the past, <laughs> further into the past, and I've I've come down to earth. No, actually, I was camping all weekend, so I should be looking very rough and tumble. Maybe I overdid it on uh, coming out of my camping trip. I don't know, but thank you for well, noticing. It's good to see you. Good, good to, see, to you. see you too, Ron. Good to see you, Flo. Nice to have you in here. Also very good to see someone who is sacrificing his sleep for this show, Matteo <laughs> Doni, CoolSmartphone.com. How's it going, Matteo? Very well, thanks. Thanks for having me back on the show. Always it, love to have you. It's great that Matteo is able to take a break from his customer service duties with his headset <laughs> to do the show. So, Oh, who went the there? Operators are standing by. Yes, and you, your goat and mocodile needs are very important to us. <laughs> so, please, so please continue to goat. <laughs> Did you guys know that all of like the spam calls now, they call and pretend that like they're fixing their headset? What? It's like Wait it's automated and they'll go, they'll go, hold, hello, hold on one second. I need to fix my headset. Ruffle. And then they go, hello. Really? Name, and then you're like, ah, it's automated. It's, it's fake. But why do they That's do weird. that? What because is, it keeps you on the line because you you don't know if it's real or not because you're not really used to hearing that. Speaking of spam calls and yes. cell phones, considering that's what we talk about, I'm a T-Mobile customer. And did you hear that T-Mobile rolled out spam call blocking at the network level? Oh, oh really? That's nice. So so one of, one of my friends who's also on T-Mobile is like, hey, did you turn on the spam blocking? I was like, no, what are you talking about? I logged into my account. And sure enough, if you go into your account settings, there's a free service now for T-Mobile customers, which is enable spam blocking or spam, you know, and the calls will never make it to your phone if you turn this on. That's so and awesome. And I literally, I literally, Remind I would get me later today to turn on spam blocking on T-Mobile. Yeah. I would get, I, <laughs> nice. <laughs> when do you want to be reminded? Tonight. Tonight. <laughs> Sorry. When or where do you want to be reminded? Woman. <laughs> <laughs> Just remind me. <laughs> anyway, uh, this I, is a PSA I, that you can block spam numbers, by the way, in the Google yes. Dial app. <laughs> oh, very cool. So, um, yeah, no, but since I turned it on, I haven't gotten a spam call since. So Lucky. it's, it's, it's Ugh, quite I amazing. Them so much. Tomorrow morning, I'm being reminded. Because that was the easiest thing for me to turn. That'll on. be good. That's you really do cool. It first thing in the morning, anyway. You well, don't yeah, do it I, I wake up and I'm like, you I you just want to turn on spam blocking tonight. right yeah. now before breakfast. That's, <laughs> that's what we all do, well, right? Before spam breakfast. blocking is exciting, but it's not as exciting as what we have to talk about tonight, which I can't wait. I've been waiting all day for the, for the show. Really? Yes. <laughs> we do have some really important stuff to talk about. Oh, man. We will be discussing later, not now, but later. Uh, Andy Rubin's essential phone, what he thinks is a very essential phone, and other assorted doodads. Uh, the Echo's change of direction is one nice way to put it in the U.S. Uh, Android Pay's expansion, Samsung Dex. You've been playing around with Samsung Dex, and you wrote up playing a review. Playing around with it. I've been using You've it You've been work. living with it. And and you wrote up a review. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Xiaomi Mi Max 2, reviews of the BlackBerry Key 1 and the Honor 8 Pro in Mateo's Hardware Shack. 
That's in the third uh, third chapter of today's show. But first, it's time for the news, Brian. We've spammed all the bad news for you, so don't worry. It's filtered out. It's now time for Android News. The cream of the crop. It's it's the news you want in your inbox. I'm, I'm waiting for the day that Brian runs out of time on that. I want to see him go down an improv road and the bumper waiting end. For and, it. You're yeah. waiting for him to fall? Yeah, just for fall, fun? Because yeah, he's so fun. good. It's never yeah. going to happen. It's, so we might as well wait for it. It's happen. happened once. I'm glad you guys forgot about it. So that's cool. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> Meanwhile, Brian yeah. is still in therapy for that one time. <laughs> <laughs> it haunts me. It haunts me. <laughs> well, so speaking of the news, I'm so excited to talk about our friend of the show, Andy Rubin. Not friend of the show, but he's going to be returning later on. Uh, but first, we got to talk about PayPal cause, and Android Pay because that's top of mind. <laughs> uh, so I didn't really know what to put up there. So there you go. <laughs> I know it's hard, it's hard to bury the lead when like the the phone that we've all been waiting for finally gets revealed, but look, it's we got to put it hard. Look, it's it, hardware but... news, Ron. Yeah. Hardware is later. Other exactly. news is top story. So, so speaking of PayPal and Android Pay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um... That's right. Oh, man. <laughs> Not time, bro. Oh, sorry, I got thrown off. All right. Hold up. Hold up. All right. So speaking of Android Pay, listen, everyone in Canada, in Canada, in, Can in Canada, <laughs> in Connecticut, that sounded like it. That sounded like a disease. I'm sorry, Canadians. All right. Uh, if you're in Canada, uh, <laughs> uh, you're going to be getting Android Pay, which is rolling out to Canada tomorrow. There was a leaked post and then redacted post in the Financial Post. Um, but uh, the word is out now. So it looks like Android Pay is coming to Canada. Um, it's going to have support for mo most of Canada's financial institutions, but two very large omissions, uh, TD Canada Trust and Royal Bank of Canada, yeah, that's uh, which is crazy. I don't understand how you can launch this without Royal Bank of Canada. I mean, it's the Royal Bank of Canada. That's yeah, true. Um, so we'll see how that goes for your Canadian friends. Uh, they're also launching uh, – they launched Android Pay last week in Russia. Don't make any jokes. And apparently it's headed to Brazil, Germany, Spain, and Taiwan soon. So Android Pay is on a world tour. And uh, one of those stops in that world tour will also be PayPal because uh, PayPal has now updated their app to support Android Pay. And it's actually doing it through a uh, quirky workaround where it creates a PayPal Discover card for use with Android Pay. And therefore, it's only usable where Discover is accepted as a credit card. So is, if you're a pay is Discover pretty accepted still or it's at still all is. or – yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Okay. I see it around. Mm -hmm. so. I had a Discover card once. In college, a right? A long time ago, yes. Yeah. It was that's my like, first credit that's, card. That's the that's the freshman dorm phone rings. Hey, you want a credit card? And you go, sure. And they said you're a Discover card. Yep. How's that work? I so. remember I remember the days of the Discover card. And then H and M opened in downtown San Francisco and that was the end of that card. After a shopping spree, I hope. Unfortunately. Yeah, it was fun though, wasn't it? Bad decisions. It was fun though, wasn't it? Uh, but I'm excited about PayPal. 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 Pay PayPal. 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 Well, yeah. It's PayPal. PayPal and Canada. People are happy to see the the kind of combined PayPal. I am because Android. I use Android Pay overseas when I go overseas and mm -hmm. wherever it's available. And I like that I can now use PayPal because what we do is we like to put our money into PayPal now, our spending money, and that's what we use. Is, that's how we budget our trips. Yeah. Okay. So now you'll just be able to use it. Draw it right over. Right. Okay. That right. Sounds, it's convenient. What's up, Madame? That sounds very convenient. Um, I'm going to be a bit confused by how it's going to work. Uh, with in-app payments, because at the moment in the UK, for example, there's a pub chain called Weatherspoons who have a, an ordering app. You just sit down at the table and order from the app, and then the staff bring you your drinks and food. And they accept both PayPal and Android Pay. So it seems a bit inefficient if you're going to be using that app and using Android Pay but funding Android Pay through PayPal in that sort of situation. Pick a side. So that you can either pick a side or just make sure there are as many transactions as possible to buy your one pint of beer. Or <laughs> drink many pints of beer. Also an option. <clears throat> the only option, as far as I'm concerned. Little side note, that, that pub chain also sell Lagunitas. 
Oh, hey. Oh, Let's see. That's a lot of money they must pay to bring isn't, that stuff over. Isn't Lagan, didn't, didn't Lagunitas get bought by Heineken and now it's all yes. over? Entirely. Yeah, yes. they have a giant yep, yep, yep. distribution center. One of, one, of my beer, one of my beer buddies was like, oh, yeah, they bought it all. And now, now we don't drink it. So. Not at all. <laughs> now, now we don't drink it. The quality yeah. of the beer has not changed at all. Even though I've drank it for years, I'm not drinking it anymore because Heineken yeah. owns it. It's uh, the beer people, the beer people it. do that. They hate it when they get when I like Heineken. What's wrong with Heineken? Mm, even I know. It's what Romanians drink at parties. <laughs> even, I <know. laughs> even I know, Flo, not to drink Heineken. Um, you know what they say about Heineken. Anyways, <laughs> I, don't know, I have no idea what they say about Heineken. I don't think there's anything wrong with Heineken. They, they say nothing about Heineken as far as I'm concerned. A new malware called Judy is being discovered in a number of Play Store apps. 40 apps uh, from South Korean developer Kini Winnie. <laughs> Kini <laughs> I don't know how you say it. That's just what it looks right. like. Bunch of uh, kids games, of course. They're all kind of kids games that the that this is happening in. The code is also found in other developers' apps since this was discovered. The malicious code actually isn't embedded in the apps themselves from the app that you download directly from the Play Store. So in this case, that's why they kind of surpassed Google's bouncer um, protections. Uh, once you download the game or the app, the app communicates with a remote server and then serves up ad click software in the background. So what happens is while you're playing the game, I think it's while you're playing the game, it could just be app, once it's installed, this happens. It opens a hidden website browser behind everything that like you're doing. Like a pop-up on a computer, on a desktop computer. Yeah, but behind, yes, exactly. Yeah. And, behind, and in the background and then clicks on ads while you're doing stuff to generate revenue to make someone That is rich. insane. It's very smart when you think about it. It is. It is super smart. I mean, and also, like, I saw the icon of that app that it came off of looked super legit. Like, super. I would... Look, it looks legit. Yeah. It's just Judy, Chef Judy. Pretty She's a picnic to... lunch maker. Well, and, yeah, I, I mean, the question here is... Because in, in many of these cases, these games seemed to exist before this malware was involved. So they were legit apps and games. And then at some point, this code was, you know, this the code was changed to connect it to that server in the background. The earliest report that they can actually verify is like April 2016 on one of the games where it hadn't been updated since April 2016. And that code was found uh, to be active in that instance of the game. Uh, everything else has been updated since then, so there's no real way to track what at what point in the history it was included. Mateo, you're raising your hand. Mateo in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, it sounds as if this is uh, either a third-party library that the game developer was using, or it's a library that's been used and since updated. Mm. Uh, and that's fetching ex external content to complete the game functionality. Uh, so this this is a common thing that's done when building some large Android apps is you build the minimal app uh, and then after installation it goes and fetches any resources or assets that aren't included in the original APK. Right. And that may be what has happened. If the app has its own inbuilt uh, web view, as many uh, cheap, fastly built apps do have, uh, that's maybe what it's using. Uh, I haven't looked into this myself, but it sounds as if it was a pretty straightforward thing. And as far as calling it malware goes, um, I'm not sure it's that bad a thing. Uh, I, there, there seems to have been little or no harm to users caused by this, apart from maybe slightly higher data charges if on mobile networks. Yeah, or potentially well, slowing I mean, down it, your device, yeah. It depends on how you want to define malware. I mean, mal malware by its nature is malicious software. The Latin and word for bad is mal. There you go. Hey. Thank you. Thank you, Flo. <laughs> so I mean, so in this case, I mean, you're right. You're you're right, Mateo, in that it's not gonna. It's not you know it's taking any of your data. It's not. I mean, your data usage, but it's not taking any of your personal data. It's not compromising your phone that we know of or whatever. But it's malicious in nature. I mean, it should not be in the Play Store. So I think um, it's kind of terrible, too, because it's like, uh, OK, Google is building all this stuff into the Play Store to help combat bad app practices and malicious app practices. And this is malicious in the sense that it's like, OK, we'll put out this one code for everybody 
now, but then after it's sort of like picked up installations, we'll change stuff in the back end without, you know, maybe Google catching it. Right. It's already installed. Although Google also has on-device scanning, but true, I don't true. know if that happens continually for the apps that you've already kind of passed through that upon installation. Because like, sometimes you install something yeah. and it's like, you know, if you download an APK, let's say, you got an APK mirror, you download an APK, I've had it where it kind of pops up the thing and it says, you know, we can we can analyze this for you to tell you if it's safe. And of course it comes up safe. Um, but I don't know if that's constantly happening on things that you've had installed for, let's say a year or two. Well, I'm also thinking about if this is happening to, you know, phones in areas where data is very precious currency, like that mm -hmm. really sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. It's terrible. Yeah. It's mean. For, it's mean. It's, it's mean. mean. Don't do that malware writers. It's it mean. Is. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to play devil's advocate here and say, how is that different from something such as the Facebook app with autoplay video and inter interstitial adverts? Well, that's why we don't have uh, because, on our phone <laughs> be, because that's no that's, because that because that's happening on the on the front pane actively. You're proactive. You're choosing to do that. Anything that's happening that you're not aware of when you think you're downloading a dumb little lunch game and it's loading a browser window behind you and constantly clicking on ads, like that's doing something that the user is not aware of, at least in the user in the Facebook kind of situation. There are videos, there are interstitial ads. You know that's part of the deals being presented. At least that's my opinion on it. It's yeah. presented to you on the top level. At least in, in the case of Facebook, you understand why you hate that it's doing it. Because right. you see it, right? Because you're aware <laughs> you're, you're you're aware that it's happening, and you can right. hate it. So there it is. Yeah. So yeah. Good right. point. Thank you. Well, hmm. we are building up a lot of buzz for a topic we will discuss eventually, which has to do with a phone. Uh, but on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have very <laughs> sad news to sort of juxtapose against the happy news that will be coming soon. <laughs> I get it. I should have put you. essential at the top of the stuff. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> no, but let's 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 listen. Let's celebrate a new phone by dancing on the grave of an old one. Yeah, see? Or an entire company. Uh, <laughs> Leico, for example, which announced uh, layoffs of around 70% of its U.S. workforce last week, plus the stepping down of their CEO and founder, Jia Yiting, after a quick and messy year. It was a quick and messy year. I feel like they just announced that, they announced that thing right before I got married and now they're like fizzling. Yeah, well, so it, it was like, like a month later. It was like the big the big uh, throw down announcement yeah. where they showed off all this stuff and we're coming to you, the US in a big Palace way and then like a month later, in San Francisco, yeah. it's all falling apart. All falling it apart. Was, it was like a tornado. Like I, I went to the New York kind of demo thing and they rented out the space in Soho and there was all the, I remember walking in and going, how much does this cost? Like, I'm, I'm not surprised that this is crashing as hard as it is. It's like a uh, bad because, episode of Silicon Valley. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, it sounds as if they were burning through cash very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And in 20 years' time, in a few people's biographies or autobiographies, they'll say, we were so close. We almost did it. Well, <laughs> just to pile it on here. So let's all remember that they had announced and made this big ballyhoo about the acquisition of Vizio, which didn't happen. Um, and But now Ron has one in his living room. So Ron has come out victorious in that. Uh, payroll for some of the U.S. employees have been delayed for at least a month, which is like kind of a bummer. Or rather, they were it delayed was, last yeah, month. yeah, at a point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the former CEO was replaced by former Lenovo executive Liang Jun. Uh, Lego is trying to rely on its name recognition right now in the U.S., which... <laughs> It's what funny because like I nobody knows who they are. Right. And there's no I mean, you guys, you go to Android webs any Android, you know, website and you'll see that there hasn't been a Leico story besides this the, downturn of its fortune. Yeah. Well, for the last it's, couple it's, of months. Well, it's funny because I was I was actually talking about Leico Leico whatever today with a friend of mine in relation to the phone that we're going to talk about after the break. <laughs> um, but we're talking about what it takes for a phone to break into the marketplace, right? And you know, Samsung has got this great dominance, and you know, LG is 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 uh, you know available, and of course the Pixel and the Google phones because they're all partnered with carriers, and that's where you get the mass amount of users. And unfortunately, Leico 
OnePlus, Nextbit, Essential, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, those are all going to be tough sells because there is no brand recognition amongst normal users. Like, yes, we know because we we live and die by each of these hardware announcements, but you know these phone companies come and go, and to the average, to my sister who's using an HTC um, M10 because she got it at the Verizon store, she doesn't know about Laeco. You know, like it's it's really baffling and really hard to make a hardware startup, especially in the phone space, work without the partnership of the carriers. These phone companies come and they let it go. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I just want to f- <laughs> look, Mateo. You're supposed to be doing these puns, not me. <laughs> Thanks. I, I left that one to you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was a pretty good one. So you should oh, blame okay. it. Yeah, that, that was very good. Well, 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 um, um, so, like eco, you know, the word eco is in it. It's supposed to stand for ecosystem. So they're going to try and sort of rebrand and market their Chinese programming through their TVs, and maybe market the smartphones for the Chinese speaking consumers in the U.S. Yes. Um, I just which, love how Flo, Flo, I love how you present that. It's supposed to stand for ecosystem. <laughs> it's like, it is. Look, it's so passive aggressive dismissing of what they're trying to do. It's supposed like, to stand for ecosystem. I mean, they're trying to, even, they were trying to sell you on like your bike is like eco and your TV is like eco. Well, yeah, that's, that's what they eco. did. That's what they did, but it, it, that ecosystem just had no buy-in. That's all. It still was an ecosystem. It's still like. They, Why would you buy into another ecosystem when there's right. Samsung and there's Apple? And Google. And yes, true. But I mean, like, uh, speaking of just like. Because they all want it. It's that golden ticket that if they can solve it, they. Golden ticket. Yeah. Uh, That golden ticket. But even. Not working. Even the eco thing was, uh, I'd say, changed within the business because when they launched their electric car, the Lacey, they were trying to say that eco isn't just about ecosystem, it's about ecology and being green. (sighs) Oh, you know what the eco was not about? It was not about economical. No. <laughs> oh. mm-hmm. That is See, a yeah. perfect end to that segment. Thank you, Ron. I'm not, I'm not the only one who can play the word game with Leeco. So goodbye, Leeco. <laughs> can we get can, uh, Brian? Can we get the horns? Can we get the the, the oh, funeral? Oh, come on! Hold on, Ron. It's Hold too on. Soon. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like when you when they're not paying employees their salaries, that's pretty bad. <laughs> and scene. Goodbye, Le Echo. So, so fade to right. black. Until next week. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about something fun and good. That's not the essential phone. It's still coming. Hold on tight. Hold on to your hold on to your hat. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> While you guys were at Google I.O., you had a great conversation with um, some folks from Google. Um, and one of the topics that came up was Kotlin, uh, which is one thing that got my ears up. And I thought it was you know, super interesting. I think the programming with Kotlin is, you know, is kind of the future for development um, as we move away for or not away from, but building on top of Java and kind of moving forward. And uh, actually, one of some a member of the All About Android community, Javier Searite. Um, mispronouncing that. I'm sorry, Javier. Uh, Searite? I don't know. Uh, he responded on Twitter and he said, using Kotlin for Android development is akin to preparing a complex meal in a modern professional kitchen. You can prepare it in your own kitchen, chopping everything by hand, mixing it with your hand blender, and it's fine. Or you can use a nice food processor and a stand mixer and professional knives and cookware. It removes the hassle and makes it a joy. So that's a very extended metaphor, but I get the sense that Javier likes Kotlin as well, too. Yeah, Mateo, I'm curious to hear your take on on the Kotlin news because I mean it was uh, it was pretty obvious at Google I/O that that developers were really really happy about it. What were what were your thoughts? Yes, um, I too am I'm very happy about this announcement. I'm a bit more worried about Google's commitment to carry on using Java uh, because they made a similar commitment to Eclipse a couple of years ago. Uh, Eclipse is the IDE that traditionally w- that was launched with the first Android SDK and is the tool used to program Java. And that's fallen by the wayside. It's now all about Android Studio, which at the same time is made by the same company who came up with Kotlin as a programming language. It's a Russian company called IntelliJ. Uh, so yes, Kotlin is good news if for developers for testers and for people who are also going to be thinking of making apps not just for Android but for other platforms, maybe platforms such as iOS or Tizen or or wherever else. Now, the idea behind Kotlin is that the 
code is much simpler. It's much easier to set up a project and to write your app. As far as the end user is concerned, there will be no changes to the way apps work or they look. The only difference that may be imperceptible is the higher efficiency, therefore better battery life, uh, speedier other tasks happening, happening in the background and so forth. But Kotlin is the way forward. And I believe we, we heard this uh, first on All About Android last year when we had Yolanda and Martin on as guests. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yep. So Yolanda made it very clear at the time that Kotlin was the way forward and she was she was right. So well done, Yolanda. Yeah, no kidding. She Bravo. was ahead of that one. Uh, she was, I, I imagine, very, very happy to kind of get the the blessing, uh, get Google's blessing on that. So, um, but yeah, I like the I like the way that Javier kind of uh, put it together in more yeah. non-developer yeah. layman's terms. Let's say, <laughs> uh, good way to kind of think about it. Removes the hassle and makes it a joy. There we go. That's great. A pro programming should be a joy. So I'm glad to see that that that's how a programmer kind of sees that. And he's a he is an Android developer, at least according to his Twitter bio. So. See, I've, as a non-developer, I feel like programming should be a joy. I just don't know how realistic that is to expect that because <laughs> I don't work with code. Well, but the fact that it cry. is... You don't want people to be sad and to have no, hard I, nights. No, hard I definitely nights. do not. You're right. You want them to feel creative and to be able to mm -hmm. like go into the fluidity of that creativity. Mm -hmm. the, the journey that just happens late the on joy. a Saturday night. Run through that field of flowers. Yeah. Yeah, I do. That is exactly what I want. All right, uh, this, well, it's time to thank a sponsor of today's episode that we'll get to possibly the biggest news about <laughs> 40 minutes into the show. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but sometimes it's fun to play around with the format. Uh, this sure. episode of All About Android is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. This is for those of you out, out there who are considering getting a mortgage or even refinancing your existing mortgage. If you've been through the process, you already know it's not always that easy to go through the process, not by traditional means anyways. Um, and if you've not gone through the process, let me tell you, as someone who has, uh, it takes a lot of management of, of information from a lot of different places, a lot of kind of manual handholding, face-to-face, uh, -face, all this type of stuff that, you know, we in the digital world, we, we spend so much of our time online. So maybe you want to do it a little bit differently. And that's what Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans is also all about. Uh, you want to work with someone who you can trust, who actually has your best interest in mind and can kind of hold your hand throughout the process uh, and do it all digitally. With Rocket Mortgage, you're going to get a transparent online process that gives you the confidence to make an informed decision so you won't have to you know, sit there searching through your stacks of paperwork to find all of this information. With Rocket Mortgage, you can securely share your financial information to get a mortgage approval in minutes. No waiting around. You can even adjust the rate. You can adjust the length of your loan in real time. Play around with the numbers. Make them fit just right for your scenario. Uh, and make sure that you get the mortgage solution that's perfect for you. Whether you're looking to buy a home or refinance your existing mortgage, you can lift the burden of getting a home loan with Rocket Mortgage. So skip the bank, skip the waiting, and go completely online at quickenloans.com slash android. That's quickenloans.com slash Android, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org, number 3030. And we thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support. Without further ado, it's time for the biggest hardware section you've ever seen. You know, and I'll, I'll call an audible here, uh, Jason and Brian, before we get into it, I, even though it's nine hours or 10 hours old, I think it's still breaking news. Uh, and just so... <laughs> okay. okay. That, that, yeah. was, that was good in a pinch. There you go. I just also want to say that Andy Rubin right now is speaking to Walt Mossberg on... That's right. Oh, yeah. So well, the internet television. Could be breaking news. No, that yeah. isn't happening right now, live viewers. Don't. Don't switch. Oh, sorry. Come back. Wait, 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 wait. Come back. Don't leave. Come back. Don't leave. Hold on. Please don't leave. Actually, Please no. Don't he's, leave. he's been talking for about a half an hour. Oh. He's, yeah. he's, he's done. And I'm sure he's talking about other stuff. He's not talking about this, the essential phone at all. No. So let's uh, <laughs> let's let everybody well, in on he's not talking them. about me, so I certainly. You tuned out. <laughs> I'm just like, kidding. <laughs> I'm going to go to the code conference and talk about Florence Ion. That's hey, I'm Andy really Rubin. What, what else do you expect me to do? <laughs> that, would that, be, would, that would be that would be weird if that happened. Let's be honest. I mean, Flo, I'm a big fan, but 
<laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> hey, one can dream. Uh, Andy Rubin earlier today un- uh, released the hounds, showed off his new phone product, the Essential Phone. That is the name. No branding on the device. It's currently up for pre-order for $699. You can see renders of the phone here. I don't know if we've seen any actual pictures. I think every photo that you see right now is all render. Uh, well, so there was, that, there, was that, there was that photo of it in Andy's pocket from a couple of months ago, right? Yeah, the corner, like the yeah. top, you know, rounded corner of it. Octa-core uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 processor, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gig storage, QHD display, fingerprint reader on the back, 13 megapixel dual rear-facing cameras, uh, f1.85 lens. The dual in this case is with a monochrome uh, camera to improve low light performance, so it's not used for the bokeh. It's more for just having just the best quality pictures and lighting and all that. Uh, for those watching the stream, please appreciate this little mechanism happening on the screen right now, which you can uh, view yep. at the Essential website, by the way. All you have to do is scroll down, and you'll see the little 360-degree camera module like slowly turn and to show Very you how cool. it clips and snaps on. right on the back. Yeah, so, so, I mean, what are the things that really differentiate this? It has a USB-C... No headphone jack. There's a dongle in the box. Dongle in the box. Uh, pure nougat. That's great. You're talking about the two-time. I think there's like 2X accessory power pins on the back. It's not a data transfer power pin implementation like you saw on the Moto phones. It's specifically just to offer power. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, allow for... Tra uh, the transfer of data. That all happens wirelessly. So you can snap an accessory, in this case, a 360-degree camera, which is what we're seeing examples of, and I'm not sure what that video is. Put on is, a shirt, but, kid. Jeez. <laughs> what is this, YouTube? What? Jeez. Jeez. Uh, oh, there's Questlove. Uh, there you go, Questlove. Um, so you can snap, in this case, you can snap the 360-degree camera to the back, it's magnetic, it snaps right into place, and it turns the phone into a 360-degree camera, essentially, uh, as you would expect. Um, let's see here. What else? Uh, the It's a, uh, what is it, titanium design. They, so they made a big deal about how it is not going to break. Right. Titanium right. is very durable. Yeah, it's the, and they actually they did a drop test. Here it is, and then they actually show photos of it compared next to a iPhone, and then another phone. I forget what it is showing the damage to the uh, right here. Seeing that, like, oh, I think that's a S seven yeah. edge. Yep. It looks like. So okay, so, so that that's if it lands on the titanium part. What if it lands on the um, the glass? <laughs> what is it? It's, it's not glass. It's ceramic. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. it ceramic? Highly. It's clay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Is. It's baked clay. Yeah, but so, who cares? Look at that ocean depths color one, though, man. That is hot. <laughs> that is super with, awesome. With okay. the copper highlights, like that is like. Listen, I don't. I mean, I know we're still going through the specs, and I don't want to be too bullish, but folks, I think we're looking at my next phone. Mm, this is your next, huh? I, I'm very. Was there like a general this. murmur that I just heard after what? After Ron said that, there was like a general murmur, just like. <laughs> I said, mm. I, mean, I don't know. Did somebody else do it? That was me too. I, Ooh. It, <laughs> I mean, listen, listen, look at, look at that. Like, there's literally nearly no bezel. The screen is so big. It's got to go around the selfie camera on the front, the front facing camera. Right. How do you feel about that? Because that I actually poses a little bit of an interesting conundrum with the notification bar. I think it forces the notification bar to be a little bit thicker. And also it splits up the notification bar. What if you got stuff running across there? Is it going to be covered? Is it going to be routed around? What does the Since software do to Jason, accommodate for that? Unlike you, I try to have little to no notifications in that bar, so it, it will actually work <laughs> for me, because currently right now in the dead center of my phone, I got nothing there. So What about when you just don't, you're, you're in a meeting for five hours, you get out of your meeting and your notifications are covering that thing? I'm not that popular. Oh, okay. Let's just, let's <laughs> By the way, let's my best guy friend just signed me to say that titanium scratches very easily. Uh, Ooh, there it is. No. Oh, yeah. oh but um, one thing's for certain, if uh, Ron does get that phone, I'll get him a purple mockadile case to go with it. I don't know well, if they'll I, make I that would, for that, Matteo. He'll I would find love it. The mock, I would love the mockadile case for it, but I wouldn't want to hide that beautiful green and copper accented uh, design. That, that is a – like, the, okay, so here's the thing. I – this morning woke up, saw the news, checked it out, thought it was – I was very impressed by everything. It's not perfect. I don't like the price. I think it's very expensive, but of course it is a flagship phone or it's a premium, whatever. So there's a high cost to it. 
Um, I don't like the fact that the green isn't reservable right now. It's just coming soon. So like literally, like I had the I had the the uh, the, the Futurama take my money moment, but I couldn't. They wouldn't take it because it's not it's not it's it's coming soon. Uh, well, none, and none of them are available right now. All right, you none can, of them, but, but you can pre-order the black or the white. You can't pre-order the green or what's the other or the gray. The oh, slate gray. I see what you mean. Yeah, I yeah, think so I, did, like, I think I, would, I did the white. Like no joke, I got so caught up in the hype earlier today that I was ready to put the money down on the green one if it was available. I totally would have done it blindly just because I was just like, wow, it's running stock Android. There's a whole – he talks all about getting rid of bloatware and all this stuff, building it just a simple good phone. Like this is the vision of Andy Rubin now, however, eight, seven years later, right? Yeah, just shut up and take my money. That's wrong. You know? Redhead Ron uh, as we like to call him. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, like so. So Andy had a vision back in the day, and now this is like the hardware has caught up to his vision. So like, and I I understand. I like to get on board. This is how I was with the next bit. I understand. I get it. Like I'm very easily impressed at this early stage. But take my money. I'm good. Should we should we uh, invite Andy on the show to say a few things about this? I would like to hear what Andy has to say about it. Of essential of essentials design mission, Andy Rubin said, "Product design for me isn't more complicated than just building a product for myself. It could be something as simple as bad battery life, or a user interface that was unusable, or a bunch of fluff and bloatware that I didn't need." So Andy's bravo, Andy. Bravo. So Andy's creating a phone as he says he's done in the past with a Sidekick. And with other uh, hardware that he's been involved with, he's creating a phone that appeals to the things that he really wants out of a device. Flo, is this your next? We know this is Ron's next bit. Is no, this your next bit? I'm sorry. I think this is a pet project of somebody who misses his old job and is trying to put something together. And maybe that's... So? I just... Because, listen, I read... This is how I feel. I... I I just, I read the objective on the website and all I could read was, this is my vision. These are the thoughts that I had that come from my brain. But for me, the perfect phone already exists and it's the Google Pixel XL. Like that's the phone that became it for me this last year. Well, and so for somebody to come to me and say, you know, here's a $700 phone that by the way is missing a lot of things that other flagships have. And yes, the Pixel is missing those too, but you know. Well, what is it? Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait. So two, two things there, Flo. Um, and I, I love the passion. I love it. <laughs> um, one, um, clearly the marketing presentation for Essential is positioning Andy Rubin in a much more public facing, dare I say, Steve Jobsian role. That's true. Right. Which I believe, which I believe is a effort to get the brand out there in front of people and give it some gravitas. They're saying the godfather of Android and all this sort of stuff, right? right? I think that's purely a marketing decision, okay? Um, in terms of the phone side, I think that I, I trust the guy. The guy, the sidekick was one of the best selling phones 10 plus years ago, right? Like that was a that was a kick-ass innovative design at the time. And it's not like if this was just another China phone, that looked like every other phone that we've seen for the past two years, I would stop, but look at that bezel. Look at the challenges it's trying to do, the pogo pins on the back, the the, the, the approach to accessories, right? Yes, it doesn't have a headphone jack. Guess what, everybody? Get over it. Your next phone in the next two years will not have a headphone jack. I promise you, it's over. Like I, and like and that's the thing. Like it was, I was talking to a bunch of coworkers today, and they're they're like, oh, it doesn't have a headphone jack. And I looked around and they all had Bluetooth headphones already. Like it's it's already move, we're, we're moving past the headphone jack and, and we need to get past it. Now, I will say that in the essential website, uh, in their marketing materials, they do say and this quote, don't you hate it when you have to buy new dongles, chargers and accessories every time your phone is upgraded? And the fact that this phone does come with a dongle for the headphone jack makes me laugh because they just contradicted themselves immediately in their marketing. But that said, I think that this is very exciting. I'm sorry. I'm talking a lot, but I, I just I. I understand where you're coming from, Flo, but don't put the marketing in to overshadow the actual device, which I think is a pretty solid, you know, uh, design forward uh, approach. And you know what? I think, Ron, that's like totally, completely fair. Obviously, yeah. I am very passionate about this. Guy. Sure. <laughs> I think we all are. I'm, I'm in a what? mode. I'm in a mode this year where technology. I'm kind of looking at it a little differently than I have in years past, and it's. I mean, quite honestly, it's taking a little more to wow me. And I Virginia. think I completely agree that there is, because there's so much like marketing uh, focus on Andy Rubin and just mm. because of 
the history that we have that I am coming at it from that particular historical bias that I have. However, I definitely agree with you that what we don't have right now is a phone that looks as great as the Galaxy S8, but has like the simplicity of the Pixel operating system. And it sounds yeah. like, I think part of the reason, Ron, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like the part of the reason you're excited about this, because it kind of is that. Like that's yeah. that's what's being posited. Like that's what's being presented. Now, and, and I don't want to, and I, I want to hear what Mateo has to say about yes. this, but I'll say one more thing. I'll say one more thing in response to Flo, some of your comments. I know, I, you know, you have, you know, the tech world can be challenging sometimes, things like that. But I thought it was very interesting on the essential website, at least, in addition to putting Andy Andy Rubin in a Steve Jobsian kind of position, that they were highlighting and spotlighting lots of members of their team, including uh, several women. Right. So I it's so true. like wh while it is Andy Rubin, when I browse the entire essential website, I got the sense of a larger team doing it and doing really cool things. Uh, right now, Andy Rubin is actually on stage at uh, at Code, showing oh. the showing the phone oh, off. So oh, it's not. Oh, are we gonna the are render? We, I put it in chat for you, Brian. Let's jump in. Um, I mean, we can just show it while we kind of talk about it. If you hit play, you'll see he's he's up there uh, right now, kind of talking about it it's and on the showing YouTubes, it off. FYI. It all right, so I mean, okay, so Mateo, oh, we haven't heard your thoughts look on this, this Mateo. Look at this. Please, All right, Mateo, please, yeah. please tell us how you feel because you you are a man that very often comes on this show and shows off phones that are hard, you know that that are unique in their own right, at least to us in the United States, because often they're not available in the U.S. market very readily, and so they do very unique things. Also, how, where does this stand in that spectrum? Do you think? I think this is a, a very, very interesting device. And I I initially was caught up in the hype a bit like uh, Ron was. So this is something different. It's done by a separate company, who, which seemed to be less influenced by the power struggles that are happening within the industry. So it's interesting to see that happen. But when you then drill down into the specs and into what's if you go past the marketing, there are a few things that, uh, in a way, disappoint me. This is a device with a 5.7-inch screen, a lovely screen with curved corners and that uh, selfie camera cut into the screen. Uh, but it only has a 3,000 milliamp hour battery. I'm worried that with a Snapdragon 835, no matter how efficient it is, that big screen will drain the battery pretty fast, especially if you start doing something as such as uh, streaming music or video, or you're in low reception areas where your phone has to continuously try and reconnect with cell towers. It's a lovely, lovely device. Look at how shiny the back of that device is and the dual camera setup. Man, that is, is quite an array of like sensors and cameras right up there at the top, and the, and the little pins. I'm just, everything. I'm sorry, I'm so distracted by how Steve Jobsian this is right now. <laughs> it is very, I'm, I'm like, this is like so. That, this is like. I'm sorry, this Mateo. This is like a decade ago. This reminds me no, no, of like no. 2006. Sorry, right. Mateo. By the way, you beautifully describe phones. I just want you to know, uh, <laughs> but it's very. Thank you. <laughs> It's just this whole like the red, uh, the recode chair and the whole yeah. like, so, I feel like deja vu right now. <laughs> so for the audio listeners, we're watching Walt Mossberg stroke Andy Rubin's phone. <laughs> On stage. <laughs> and that's like not I said, Mateo's great that's with descriptions. <laughs> and you just shut it down right there, Mateo. Thank you very much. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Everything we said up to that point is now null and void. No, not true. Um, but yeah, but so, so the, no, the but other so, point so the is the, the the phone is super. Ex oh, sorry, Mateo, go ahead. Yep. So the the other point is uh, going through the marketing. If you go into it a bit more in depth, I believe you you tweeted about this as well today, uh, Flo. I I have mixed feelings about Andy Rubin's family and friends because I don't know if to feel sorry or relieved for them uh, by the fact that they're not spending as much time as Andy Rubin would like to spend with them at his bakery which is a very first world issue. Oh, yeah, that's right. He has a bakery. I didn't... Did I know that he had a bakery? I didn't know I that. Didn't know okay, that. Mateo, next time you come to the United States, we're going undercover to the bakery. <laughs> okay. Then. We're putting on wigs <laughs> are we glasses. Going to order are we going to order apple tarts? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh, jeez. Anyway. My well, father loves a strudel. <laughs> 
Well, so so the phone wasn't the only thing that they announced, though. That's what I was surprised yep. about. Was yep. that they yes. also oh, they that's also right. announced <laughs> a home a home competitor, um, yeah. which is running Ambient OS. Yes. Which I'm very curious what the the nitty gritty of that is. It has a little display on it with like a little menu screen. It looks very uh, it looks very like that new Amazon One Light. That yes. Little video one that they have. And to be honest though, I like the way this looks actually because it has a little display on it and you know, sometimes having a display is nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I, I, I am actually very curious to see more. Like when Amazon showed off there, I think it's the, is it the look? Uh, the, the Echo look? I mean, I, I like the idea of having, a, having the option anyways of having a screen on these devices because sometimes audio just isn't quite enough. It's nice to have a visual layout. Uh, one thing that this does a little bit differently is it has a focus on security. So most of the stuff that you do on this device stays on the device. It's not, it's not querying to the cloud. Al although, I mean, some of it has to, right? Because it will answer general questions that you ask it. Um, you know, whatever your random question, you're like, what is whatever this question what, was about you, a baby kangaroo. I mean, could you program all that though into that device? Instead well, then of it's very it limited cloud? compared to what we're used to asking these true. things, which is the world's information, you know? So I, I'm guessing that it's, that's something that you can opt into is my, my guess, you know, and you can keep most of the stuff like how, you know, what devices you're controlling in your smart home and uh, your calendar, you know, keep all that stuff on device. Uh, maybe f people will feel a little bit better about it, but. I, I, That's I the think gamble they're is, taking. Yeah, I think this is just overall a great launch. I think that this was, you know, it it, it inundated the press, right? Right after Memorial you know, Day. It, like, right so yeah, right after Memorial quiet. Day. Yeah, so, you know, The Verge had the exclusive, but then Wired had a huge in-depth article. There was, like, a ton of well-executed press on it. The materials that they have on the website really got it across, you know, in terms of what these devices will do. And I think if you're you know interested in this stuff, it will be you know it's it's an exciting time because it's another player. But going back to my earlier kind of decision, how successful can this be? It's seven hundred dollars, yeah. seven hundred fifty dollars with the camera. They're doing a special where you get fifty bucks off the camera or whatever if you buy it with the phone. Um, who's gonna buy this other than me? You know. Well, like, yeah. It's, I mean, you you're probably not. You only know Andy Rubin is the father of Android if you care about this stuff. Most people right. do not. You. Most people in the United States buy their phone because they walked into their carrier and got some sort of a you know a deal or were shown a phone or whatever. This will not be sold in carrier stores. This is all done through their site. A lot of people rely on that monthly like pay as you go ability for their phones as well. Yeah. Um, but it's worth noting that, and I actually dropped a little link to this. Is there was a tweet from Ina Fried earlier today yeah, yeah. that Sprint would be the confirmed carrier for. Uh, the essential phone. What does that mean? Uh, that means well, alarm bells. Or rather ring. that it, oh, well, no, well, I'm sorry, no, that, that it would that work on the network. Okay. Yeah, and so oh, it's going to work on all networks. Which means yeah. that it is yeah. CDMA, CDMA compatible, which right. uh, which bodes yeah. well for those of us who... It's it's unlocked, basically, right? Yeah. So of course, so it's of course, work you know, on then everyone, everyone's confirming that it'll work in CDMA. That makes sense, right? Sorry, but guys, I haven't read that tweet it's, since this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's not tied to any carrier, which is great because, you know, we can buy it online. It's good. I mean, I haven't paid $600, $700 for a phone, I don't think ever. So if I do get it, it's going to sting. Um, that's one of the reasons why I love the next bit was because they were giving me something different and unique at a lower price point. Uh, you know, but this one is really interesting. But I, I still go back to what I said earlier is that a fatal flaw of a new uh, hardware startup in and around Android is not working with the carriers. And as annoying as Verizon and AT&T are, they, they move units. That's why Samsung is what is Samsung right now. That's the, uh, purely why. Do we want to see the camera really quick? Or we're piggybacking yeah. on the code conference. I know. <laughs> right yeah, I know. I don't want to take too much from their content because they're they're totally doing it right now. Not, it's interesting. But, <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's a three hundred. There you go. There's a three hundred sixty degree camera. If you want, oh, to see. it fits on there really nicely. I have yeah. to say, I like I like the way it kind of. And that's the integrates. white variant that we're looking yeah. at right now. And by the way, for those of you who are listening to the audio stream, you can see all of this online on YouTube. Um, it's the code conference from Recode. Or you can watch yes. the Twitch stream. And and for those listening to the audio version, uh, we're all having a bit of a palm palm trio flashback there with the camera add-on. 
<laughs> yeah, a little you bit. Remember? <laughs> yeah. You're right. <laughs> that is a good point. But I, I think the approach, though, with the add-on and the accessories is a little moto, right? I like yeah. the dock. It comes with a dock, a charging dock. And, and uh, like, it's I, I something about this phone, I think I, I'm excited. I, clearly, you can tell I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's we a pretty, can. I mean, it's a pretty phone, like, now that we just yeah. saw it in video. But... Mm -hmm. As you said, there's no carriers behind it. No, yeah. Well, it's unlocked, but it's unlocked. But yeah, there are no carriers yeah. selling it. That's at the yeah. So, the, so the marketing I mean, will be interesting. Yeah, is it, is it just going to be another one plus? You know, yep. another one plus, another you know, another next bit, another you know, who knows? It is an uphill uh, mm -hmm. climb for sure. Um, it's so exhausting. <laughs> Welcome to our job. Speaking of exhausting, how do you feel after uh, spending some time with the decks? The Samsung Dex. Now, b before Flo does, remember, I was very bullish on this after it was announced. I thought the Dex was the next step in computing. Was I right, Flo? It is. A, I'm, I'm guessing you're going to say it's a, a step. It's adorable. Florence, I'm going to remind you that we're an audience. We're like mainly people listen to us <laughs> talk. So you're going to have to say something. <laughs> it's just, I just love this pops in and out, in and out. So this pops in and out, and then you pop in... The S8 inside, and apparently it turns into a giant computer if you yeah. attach it to a monitor, and it works, but it's just as limited as, you know, Chrome OS, really, if you think about it. Is it more or less limited, do you think? I mean... Um, I actually think it's a little less limited because I had an easier time with the Android apps on this than I did with Chrome, uh, this exact Chromebook sense. flip I'm using right now, which, as I told you before the show, was giving me problems this weekend mm -hmm. and all this stuff. Um, yeah, so the Android apps are perfectly accessible from the Dex operating system UI. Not to mention that some of them were optimized for Dex. So like if you are using the typical Adobe Microsoft suite of things, those will be mm -hmm. fine. But then there are some apps that won't work at all. Like for instance, the Spotify app doesn't work because it doesn't have a tablet variant or something like that. Like I wasn't- oh, weird. I, th that's just my conjecture. Like I'm not entirely sure if that's what's going on. Could you open up Spotify on. in a browser, in the browser uh, I did instance? and it's so finicky, like it didn't work. Like I even tried using TweetDeck in the Chrome browser on this and it's not like using it on Chrome OS. Yeah, I'm, so like, in my experience, so I played around with it a little bit as well, and I know, I actually had better luck in some cases with the built-in browser that yeah. they give you versus like you know opening why? up Chrome because OS. Because Samsung optimized that for Dex, yeah. they didn't. I mean, Chrome is not optimized for this right. thing. Chrome is optimized for Google products. Yeah. But the plus side is that I had no problem like filing work with this, and I even had an easier time editing images with it. Like it's the built-in image editor on the Galaxy S8 is incredible. Mm. Like I can edit raw photos, no problem. I can just like stick in a, um, a SD card like that with Canon raw photos. It'll edit them. I can crop them. It'll save right under the megabyte limit that I need. Mm -hmm. Like, and I can't do that very easily with Chrome OS. And it's it's probably because I'm using the wrong apps, but just that process of getting into a flow, a workflow is, ah. is very easy to do, huh? Yes, it's very easy to do. Um, but one bummer is that if you're traveling without the adapter for this thing, it's not gonna work because you need like, you need a powerful adapter so, to power so, this thing. So I, got, so I got a question for you, Flo, though, because in your article um, where you say it's, it isn't a replacement for your laptop, and I believe one of the headlines was just by a laptop people, um, which is that thing? I don't see Dex as a replacement for your laptop. Like uh, the way I, the way I would see Dex, the way I would use Dex is I would get that base, I would put it here in my living room, and when I came home from the road, I would pop the phone in the thing, and now I could use it with you know with the TV, and I and it's a desk. It seems like a desktop replacement on a laptop replacement, right? Yeah, but a lot of people were asking me like if it's something that they could use it in lieu of a laptop, and so I was kind of like yeah. trying to answer the answer that but I agree with you Ron like it's totally a TV computer because yeah. like so I found out while I was at Google I.O. that um, I couldn't power this on because I didn't bring the adapter <laughs> but my intention was to use it to watch YouTube TV because the app is on here mm. and I got my show recordings my DVR and I wanted to watch them while I was I wanted to watch my housewives while I was at Google I.O. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> I ended up just watching them on the phone uh, but for work and stuff, like, I'm just glad that 
it's usable. It's usable. It's not a gimmick. Yes, it's not like 150 bucks for this little hockey puck shaped thing. And yes, you have to like carry cords around and a keyboard and a mouse. And a mouse. And, but and I, and make sure there's a where you're going with HDMI. Yeah, you don't carry it around. This is for your home. This is not a the portable device. I don't. Well, think. I th but I, th I think would that take there's this yeah, to, I did. To the, like the summer home if I was person with a summer home. I would like bring this to the summer someday home. You, well, someday well, you will well. have a summer home. Well, I, I guarantee it. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people actually did see this as a portable um, a portable desktop solution. Yeah. Like, I want a desktop where I'm going, so I bring this, and that gives me a desktop experience in this place that I happen to be going. The problem... So, so in some ways, it's kind of both of what you're talking about, right? Yeah, it could be a desktop like, at home, but it's also kind of thought of as being like a road warrior's tool, you know? That's weird, though. That, I mean, especially with the connectors and all the wires. Like, I could see getting one at home, getting one at the office, and, and that way you don't need to carry a laptop in between and all that sort of stuff. But I guess that doesn't solve for when you're on the road. But um, Or in your vacation yeah. home. Yeah, I saw it more as the li the living room experience where the mm -hmm. the dude pops it into the dock in that very white modern design living room, and then he can do email on his TV. Oh, okay, what do you think, Mateo? Have you uh, played around with any with this or devices like it? Yes, so I I've played around with. Uh, I think it was Ubuntu uh, had the idea of this scaling operating system that went from smartphone, which you, and you could install Ubuntu on the the Nexus Four and then scale it up to a desktop experience when plugged into the right accessories. Uh, Windows had a similar uh, experience of scaling up from your, your smartphone. Uh, I've played around with those a bit more in depth and had a cursory play around with the Samsung DeX and the Samsung Galaxy S8. It works. Um, I haven't played in, around enough with it to, to have a proper opinion. What I will say is uh, what Flo mentioned there earlier about the browser, the Samsung browser working better than Google Chrome. This is, I think, the best justification of why some smartphone manufacturers still carry on developing and making their own browsers, is they optimize the browser to work with hardware both input and output. So whether it's Samsung DeX or it's a stylus such as the S Pen, this is why Samsung still carry on having their own browser. They optimize that for their own hardware. And it's it's a good reason for it in my view. Mm -hmm. But no, I haven't had enough time with the DeX. I look forward to spending more time with it in the future. You're giving me a good idea. <gasps> Ding! I, have, I don't spend much time with the Samsung browser. Like, maybe I should. On the phone? Yeah. 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 Maybe I should, like, I, you know, ignore Google Chrome for a tiny it's bit. It's actually interesting. In, in the month that I spent. Been offered. Now yeah. that everything has been made better, and like Mateo says, it has been optimized, and this is 2017. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. You know, it's not 2013. It's progress. Yeah. A lot of progress it's, since then. And companies like Samsung and others have their particular input. So the S Pen, for example, has a lot of extra functionality that can be baked into the web browser. That's true with like the uh, right click and everything. Exactly. So that's the sort of reason why some uh, smartphone manufacturers still uh, have their own web browser, which is obviously a fork of Chrome with a blink engine. But it's a, it's a good reason for them to still be out there. And that feeds back into Google's own development of Chrome as a browser. So I think it's it's a good thing for the ecosystem as a whole. It's a beautiful browser ecosystem. <laughs> anyway, so Samsung beautiful. Dex. If you want one, you can get one off Amazon. They're there. I think I think with the <laughs> Dex, you already know whether you should get one or not. Like it yeah. is, it is, yeah. it kind of is what it, what you think it's going to it's be. It's an accessory, but I right. did want to lay it out there for anybody who thought, you know, this would maybe be a, like a well, full computer. Well, I think I think there's definitely an argument to be said that is a step forward, and we've seen it with Microsoft doing it now with Samsung. That there's going to be a point in time where you have a monitor and some sort of dock. And you carry your phone and that's got everything you need. And then you just pull out a keyboard and it works in this way. I definitely think that is a EBCOT like future that we can expect at some point that works very smoothly and better out of the box without a lot of cables. Why can't I just like buy like an unfoldable monitor that just unfolds like this laptop and is lighter than this laptop and just stands up? What, wasn't there the wacky, the Jason, weren't there wacky Asus? Uh, what was that? The, the, Pat, the Pat phone? 
Not, pad phone, no. yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> or a phone pad, or phone no, pad. No, but I mean, like, an actual phone. monitor, you can just, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I'm sure I can find something like that well, on AliExpress. In, yeah. Speaking of things that we wish for, a couple of uh, weeks ago here on the show, I was wishing, wishing for a phone with a mega enormous battery. And if I wasn't getting the essential phone, I might be getting the Mi Max 2 from Xiaomi. Um, Xiaomi showed off the Mi Max 2 in Beijing last week, and it's a 6.44 inch full HD display with a 5300 milliamp battery. Um, that's a 450 milliamp improvement from the previous Mi Mix. Mi Max, sorry, gives you 18 hours of video playback, 21 hours of GPS, and 57 hours of talk time. Um, and it's got Quick Charge 3.0, which gives you 68% of battery charge in one hour. Uh, it's built on a metal unibody with a 2.0 gigahertz Snapdragon 625. It's got a 12 megapixel rear camera, 5 megapixel front camera. It's got micro SD, uh, rear fingerprint. It's running Android Nougat 7.0, 4 gig of RAM, 64 gig of storage. Um, it's available in China for around $250 on June 1st. And the 4 gig of RAM, 120 gig uh, with storage is for around 290 uh, Mateo, were you just flashing yeah, one of these? Yeah, what were you or? just showing? What was that? Or was so, that Machadile? <laughs> this is both. So this is the Xiaomi uh, Mi Max 1, the one that was launched last year by Hugo Barra, uh, obviously tricked out in Machadile and uh, glass screen protector. This uh, is my travel device. It's a big screen smartphone, and it's fantastic for both long battery dry, uh, life and consuming content on the go. So the Mi Max 1, in my view, was a huge success. It's a great product. It may not be for everyone, but it's a good device. The Mi, Mi Max 2 just plays on its strengths and improves. There's marginal improvements in the size of the battery, the quality of the overall package, but specifically in the, in the chipset. So they're using the Qualcomm Snapdragon 625, which is a very efficient mid-range chip, and that's perfect for this type of device because most people won't, won't want to be doing high-end gaming on it. They will most likely be just watching video, listening to music, doing social networking. And I'm, I'm really, I really like the Mi Max 1. I will most likely be hunting down a good retailer on AliExpress to order a Mi Max 2 for myself. It's a, it's a great form factor, despite being almost tablet-like. And then once you get the Mi Max 2, you can charge up the Mi Max 1 and bring it along. And then when you need to charge up your Mi Max 2 while you're on the go, you can use the Mi Max 1 to charge the Mi Max 2. Just plug them yes, into each other. Whilst we're at it, I'll just carry on using the Lenovo P2, which is the one I showed last time I was in studio, with a 5,000 milliamp power battery. Uh, <laughs> because that's, again, very similar. 5,000 milliamp power battery, Snapdragon 625. Another great long-lasting battery device, which comes with an adapter for you to charge other phones with it in the box. This is a smartphone centipede. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! Oh no! Oh no! No yeah. one, no one, with take the... that and run with it, please. No one. <laughs> no. Definitely no one, don't make no that the title. It. Please no don't. One do a search for it. But with the Lenovo P2, I couldn't find any appropriate mockadile, so I put googly eyes on it. Yeah, that works. Oh, of course he did. Oh. Nice, there you go. It looks yeah. like a thing that has a mouth. <laughs> it really it kind does. of, a very small mouth. Oh, With a tiny, Mateo. tiny little mouth down at the bottom there. Uh, <laughs> all right. I knew that, I knew that phone would be right up your alley. Um, we're going to talk, your AliExpress. We're going to talk about a few other phones that are right up your AliExpress in a second. But first, <laughs> let's take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's episode. That's Bitbucket. You guys are, a lot of you are developers, so you understand that your code is super important. It's your world. You create it. You tweak it. You obsess over it lovingly every single day. It's what you do. So picking the right repository management tool is super important only the best for your code. You want to take care of that code, nurture it, make it the best it possibly can be. Uh, that's why the team at Atlassian created Bitbucket. Bitbucket is the Git solution for professional teams. It helps over 5 million developers build with a purpose. Bitbucket gives teams of all sizes free private repositories with state-of-the-art features, the world's best pull request algorithm, Pull requests facilitate code reviews. Uh, you collaborate right in the code with inline comments, threaded conversations, and also mentions. Uh, Built-in continuous delivery, 
branch permissions that help prevent errors by controlling the actions that users can actually perform. Uh, you can get granular permissions at the project repository or the branch level. And I mean, really high on the list are integrations. Integrations make this even more powerful with your favorite tools like Docker, AWS, and Azure. Because Bitbucket comes from Atlassian, it offers the best Jira integration available. That gives your team everything you need to take your code from concept to customer. And uh, I know we here we here at Twit we use this, and uh, you know. It's just, it's highly used, highly loved, and we're not alone. More than 900,000 teams love Bitbucket. It's used by companies like Ford, PayPal, Starbucks, and Pandora, just to name a few. It's the only collaborative Git solution that massively scales. So Bitbucket is for the code that takes us to Mars, decodes the human genome, or drives your next car. You'll see. Visit bitbucket.org slash for the code, and you can start your free account. That's bitbucket.org slash for the code. And you can try Bitbucket today and see what your code can do. And we thank Bitbucket by Atlassian for their support of All About Android. No need for a hardware bumper. I don't think that we have one for Mateo's Hardware Shack. Do we? No, we don't have one. Maybe we need to get one. But Mateo, you have a couple of devices that you have been spending some time with. Uh, one, we had a little teaser last week, uh, right? We we had the BlackBerry Key 1 Josh uh, Vergara from Android Authority was on. He said that he loved it. He was really digging his time with it. And you've been playing around with it. Tell us what you think, Mateo. Yes. So I'm in the lucky position where it's been available in Europe for a bit longer than it's been available in the U.S. If I'm not mistaken, it goes on sale in the U.S. this week. Yeah, tomorrow, uh, I believe. The, the BlackBerry Key 1 is not something that's been a secret. It's been widely leaked uh, ver through various websites. Uh, it was then launched at MWC. We got hands-on time with it at MWC. Excellent first impressions. And I've been using the BlackBerry Key 1 for about a month now, and I'm very, very happy with it. So it's not a super high-end phone in terms of specs. As, a, as with the Mi Max, I'd say, don't expect to use this device for high-end gaming or for very uh, processor-intensive things such as video editing. It will do a good basic job, but don't expect it to be a high-end device. This is a device for getting stuff done. It's a BlackBerry with a physical keyboard. That physical keyboard is just like the one on the BlackBerry Passport, but a bit uh, narrower. The fingerprint scanner is in the space bar, so it's on the front. And the whole keyboard acts as a trackpad. So, for example, if you're in the Twitter app or in the Google Plus app and you're scrolling through your stream, you don't need to put your finger on the screen. You scroll on the keyboard. So there's a lot of new interaction models on the hardware itself. But it feels solid to hold as well because it has a, an aluminum construction, nice, soft, touch uh, rubber back like other BlackBerry devices in the past. It feels really solid. The battery life is excellent. And that's probably due to the fact that it has a Snapdragon 625 chipset, which we mentioned earlier, and a 3,350 milliamp hour battery. Uh, I'm very, very happy with this device. And I'm use I purchased one for myself, and I'm using it on a day-to-day -day basis with one of my top three SIM cards. The operating system is Android 7.1 with a custom launcher by uh, BlackBerry and the BlackBerry Hub software. The custom launcher is actually very good. It's uh, slightly different from the Nexus or Pixel Experience launcher, but it has some neat little tricks, uh, such as the fact that it natively supports uh, icon packs. So usually if you install a launcher like Action Launcher or Nova Launcher to have uh, custom icon packs, you don't need to do that with the BlackBerry Key 1 because BlackBerry's own launcher, the one optimized for the hardware and the operating system itself, supports icon packs. So for, for those who like customizing their phone, this is a good option without going too deep into the customization. Uh, there are a few other things that have changed uh, compared to Google's Nexus or Pixel experience uh, th uh, 
in the software, but ultimately it, it goes by material design and it's a, it's a pleasant experience. It does take some getting used to, getting back to a physical hardware keyboard, but I do like my uh, BlackBerry Key one, and it's one of the devices I reach for most often. Mateo, so, how do you... Oh, sorry about that. No, no, go, go ahead, Flo. I was just going to ask, uh, because there was a question in the comment or in the chat, it was how do you feel like holding it sideways? And I'm curious too, because I'm actually curious. How does it feel holding yeah. it sideways and such? Um, it feels good. Um, the only thing I'd say is when using it sideways with an application such as YouTube mm -hmm. or watching video, there's a bit of letterboxing going because the screen has been adapted to a different aspect ratio just to deal with the form factor. The physical keyboard underneath shortens the, the, the aspect ratio. Okay. So the, it's not that good for watching video, but basic games work on it great. Um, for typing when holding it sideways, that's where that you get a virtual on-screen keyboard, much the same as normal touchscreen smartphones. Uh, but And that means that your screen real estate for actually seeing what you're typing or what's in your chat is limited. To be honest, I've hardly ever used the device in, in portrait mode. I've always used, sorry, in landscape mode, I've always used it in portrait mode. Uh, and it works for me. I, I really do like the the keyboard and the shortcuts you can get from that. So I'm, I'm really impressed by what uh, the parent company who manufacture the phone, TCL, have done in partnership with BlackBerry. And I think this is a, it's a bold new beginning for the BlackBerry brand, though not the same business we, we remember from the research in motion days. But it looks like they got something pretty critical to BlackBerry's brand right, and they got the mm -hmm. keyboard experience mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And I think I'd that's say, what a lot of like long-term fans of the BlackBerry brand, that's definitely one of the things that they've wanted uh, in coming to Android is to get that. Yeah, I'd say there's two things. It's the keyboard experience and the battery life. Mm -hmm. uh, BlackBerry were battery champions as far as smartphones went, even compared to the early Android or iOS devices. They lasted days longer at the time. And I can comfortably say I can use this phone for two days without having to recharge it. Uh, I, as I said, I don't use it for a lot of gaming. I don't lose it for media, but for Outlook, Gmail, messaging, Slack, uh, it's, uh, it's a battery champion. It's very, very efficient. Hmm. Nice. Um, so then that's not the only phone that you've been playing around with. You also have the Honor 8 Pro, or is it the Honor 8 Pro? <laughs> yes, the Honor 8 Pro uh, by Huawei, which <laughs> pairs up with the Huawei Watch. No giggling, Ron. <laughs> I can't not. I just can't. <laughs> You know who's wearing a Huawei watch today? Oh yeah, I am wearing a Huawei watch. Uh, Huawei, the, uh, the Huawei watch too, which I think should be called the Huawei watch sport, but maybe that's something else entirely. But anyways, I, I don't, anyways, I don't have any review. Uh, back no, to you. Sorry. The, the Honor 8 Pro is a 5.7 inch smartphone with a capital QHD screen. It has a uh, a lovely metal unibody with a with a dual camera at the top at the back, which is very, very similar to the one used last year in the Huawei P9 and P9 Plus. This dual camera on the back has a very interesting way of dealing with the laser auto, autofocus, the laser sensor, which is embedded behind the script that says dual lens. Uh, the fingerprint scanner is on the back, which I actually prefer in many instances. Yeah. And the color option that is available in the UK at the moment, or was available when I pre-ordered uh, almost two months ago, uh, is this blue color, which feels nice to hold in terms of its color finish, but it's also a nice blue. And the antenna lines uh, in the metal unibody are, are slightly darker blue. So it reminds it's me of not a pixel. Oh yeah, it kind of. It does, does. Yeah. but they've done something that the, the that Google got wrong with the Pixel. They made the front blue as well, so it's much more consistent. It's much more of a, an eye catcher than the the Google Pixel with a white front, in my view. 
I don't know how, how strongly you feel about that, Flo. I agree. I wish there was a little more. A little bit more wraparound yeah. on the Yeah, board. a little more. I, don't know. I, I like the contrast, but yeah, I see. I see what you yeah. mean. It would be. I mean, one thing I really like about the Honor Eight. This is this is my Pixel, and you can see blue on the back, white on the front. Uh, it would look nice if it wrapped around. One thing that I really liked about the Honor Eight before this one was the the blue color that they chose, and yeah, that it, the yeah. the entire that device was, was painted that way. One thing I didn't like about that one was the fact that it was all glass front mm. and back because I promptly went and cracked it because that's what I do to phones, apparently. Also um, fingerprinty. <laughs> yeah, fingerprinty as well. So I'm happy that they kind of removed the glass from the back. It gives it a little bit more durability. It's not only that. The, obviously, because it has a 5.7-inch screen, they squeezed in a much bigger battery, so it's now a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Mm. Wow. Um, it has the same chipset as the Huawei P10 and P10 Plus, so the the uh, high silicon Kirin 960 chipset. So it's uh, not as fast as the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, but almost there. And it's also quite power efficient because it's one of the newer chipsets. So this is, is a device where you can get a full day's battery life, even in heavy use with some gaming and video calling involved. It's, uh, it's a lovely device. Uh, I'd say... It's in the same price range as the BlackBerry Key One, and it's ultimately a lifestyle choice. Do you want a smartphone for sort of lighter social media use and gaming? Then go for the Honor 8 Pro. You get a bigger, better phone for that type of task. If, on the other hand, it's all about messaging, basic social networking, and getting work done, I'd say go for the BlackBerry Key One. They're in the same price range. It's down to what do you need the phone for? How do you see yourself using it? Uh, sadly, the Honor 8 Pro isn't going to be available in the US as far as we know. Mm -hmm. um, this is a device that has been around a bit longer than the last month, though. So the same device was sold in China as the Honor V9 um, until recently. And that's a good thing if you're shopping around for accessories. So if you're looking for Mocodile cases, or any other case for that matter, AliExpress and uh, other retailers such as Amazon will likely have cases available for you. So I've opted for a bit of a clash, uh, and I have a lovely sort of sandstone finish uh, case, which reminds me a bit of the OnePlus One. So it's not a soft one. It's a bit rough. It's a bit easier to hold in the hand. Uh, and then, obviously, the, the killer feature for some is that it has an infrared blaster. You can use this to remote control televisions in airport lounges and in airports. <laughs> <laughs> or at the gym. Which I or at the gym. Uh, I, I do got to admit that no one accessorizes a phone better than Mateo. It's true. Like in terms of color, you know, texture, all this sort of stuff. As someone who never puts a case on his phone, if I were to, I would consult with Mateo and find out what case I should use. Great. Thank <laughs> and sure you. enough, it'll, it'll be Mockadile. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Italian genetics, you know, fashion accessorization. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but let's not forget that a lot of the smartphone industry uh, is the smartphones themselves are sold at cost. What's is actual the real money maker for the industry as a whole is the accessories and the add-ons and sometimes apps and service pre-installs. So when looking at a smartphone, being able to look at the accessories available for them can also be an indicator of how successful the device will actually be, Absolutely. how committed the manufacturer is to seeing this device used globally by a lot of people is if at launch or shortly after there's a lot of cases and accessories for it. If there's no cases, you better worry. You better worry well, about that phone you just bought. I was bought. worrying about the Pixel. <laughs> I was worrying about the Pixel for a while, but thankfully yeah. Amazon caught seems to have caught on. Yeah. Good question there is whether or not the essential phone will have any cases. Why would you put a case on well, the essential phone? It looks like phone? it might need one because of yeah. how shiny well, that back is. That ceramic it, back. Although, but they they say that it 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 it, it holds up to the drop test. So maybe that maybe Andy Rubin's suggesting it doesn't use a case. I don't know. We got to find out. We got to ask him. Maybe holds we gotta get up on to this. the drop Levitate. test if it drops yeah. on the titanium part and not the ceramic part. 
believe me, give give me the essential phone. I will break it. <laughs> Is that a challenge? Pur- I won't do it purposefully. I won't go there, but it'll happen if I don't put a case on it. I just it sounds I like a challenge. It. Kind of. Well, I'm sure you will. Reality. So what? So what's the plan? Next time I'm in the U.S., we go to Andy Rubin's bakery and do drop <laughs> tests with the essential phone. Oh and see if my we'll God! Bake this pastry case. <laughs> and like and. Huh. Huh. We'll eat oh, some oh, yes, pastries. and I need to bring you deodorant. Oh, oh and, and, and deodorant. that, yeah. <laughs> Please, make sure you bring some deodorant for Flo, okay? All right. Uh, thank you for uh, for jumping into the, the hardware shack, Mateo. It's always a pleasure. We appreciate it. And uh, that's thank not you. one but two phones that we talked about in the past. Now we have an official review on the books, so thank you for that. Without further ado, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone else, it's time for the arena. So many enter. <laughs> and I said without further ado again. <laughs> arena. It is so my crutch phrase right now, and I've got to I've got to kill it with fire. I feel you. Oh. And once you know, it's it becomes even more hard, even more difficult to get rid of. <laughs> Bit.ly slash AAA vote three one nine. That was last week's poll, and. Let's take a look and see. I can see the responses. Which was the the winner? It was Rave. Nice. Flo gets a win. Uh, very good. Rave, 46.3% of the vote. Spot Angels, second place with 22.4%. Third place is Tambor, 20.6%. Fourth place is Five Minute Journal at 10.7%. So what that means for the standings, and we want to welcome back Wade County to the chat room. We missed them a lot last week. We had no idea who was in what place. True. But as they stand now, starting from the bottom in fourth place are the guests. So, Mateo, no pressure there. Guests have 49 points. Flo moves ahead in third place with 53 points, inching ever closer. Jason holding strong in second with 59 points. And with my second place last week, that puts me back in first at 61 points. So uh, He listen. says with a big smile on his face. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, Spot Angels was a good app. I, that was uh, that, I, I had I had a good faith that was going to win, but still, these are uh, close. I mean, this is Jason, close. Yeah, J- Jason, you you come in if if I get a last and Jason, you get a second. If you get a third, you're beating me. Like it's <sighs> it, it, it's anybody's game. Flo, you get you get first place. You're back in it. Guests, we're kind of leaving in the dust. So maybe they need a goat to pull them out of the dust. I don't know. They we'll need see. to pull a goat from the hat. You got to pull a goat. Will goats do that, or will they just eat the? Rope that goes yeah, into the ocean. Well, that's a good question. The goat might yeah. might sink the ship. Uh, you got to be careful. Good point. Uh, all right, so I guess that means that I go first. Ron goes last, and it's all swapped around. Flo, go, Flo, Flo goes yeah, last. Yeah, I go last because I won last week. She won. Rave won. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I got that wrong. Uh, my apologies. Ron, you go up there. Flo, okay, you go fine. down there. <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm editing the doc. I apologize, Flo. Uh, I was just... Yeah, I don't know. I was thrown off by the rape demoting music. Demoting me. It's all right. It's demoting you. I'm I'm happy you you pointed it out though. Um sure. I don't have any rave music to play. I don't have anything along it's, those it's, lines. It's, it's, but it's, it's, you it's, might it's, you may I don't know if this has ever happened to you. Have you ever been without headphones and yes. you want to listen to something yes. but you don't want to use your speaker. You would just yes. want to listen to it through the ear. A piece. podcast while I'm walking yeah. from my car to the front door. I need to finish and, that. And you're okay yep. with the fact that you're listening to something yep. and it looks like you're talking on the phone. You don't care because it's it means that everybody else isn't also listening to it. That's what stealth audio oh, player man. is all about. And when I say that this this is a very low install app, I think it's probably somewhere around the five to ten installs. So not many people have downloaded this app, but it does it, it does the scenario that I've just uh, laid out for you. Stealth audio player. Here's a bunch of audio that's saved on the device. So, I mean, in order to do this, it's got to be a, f- a file that's saved on your device. So it doesn't have, like, play music support. I don't know how you'd plug that into that. Maybe eventually it'll get it. For right now, it supports MP3. It supports AUG. It supports WAVE. And he, just, uh, he or she just supported M4A as a file format. So I happen to have this episode of all about android from last week called camp google you can see it's saved on my device i'll go ahead and play it hold on <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like it's coming through the no no oh uh, 
It's not working. Hold on. It's playing it through the normal speaker. Let me get rid of things. Crap, I'm going to lose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. No, nope, never mind. My app doesn't work. So it's called Stealth Audio Player. It worked for me earlier today. It's not working now, but maybe it'll work for you. You should give it a try and see what it, we'll see what it's like for you. <laughs> you never know. You should take a chance Send on the underdog. Send us a video mail, maybe. <laughs> take a chance on the underdog. I can't show off your app for you if it doesn't work for me, but it worked earlier today. It's called Stealth Audio Player, and it promises a lot. Let's see if it'll deliver <laughs> for you. All right, who's up next? I'm, I'm not even going to try on that anymore. I'm up next. Uh, <laughs> All right, Ron, I got you. Uh, J- yeah, I don't know if you installed this app or not. Since it's an email client, uh, we can just show the screens on the Play Store if you <laughs> nope, want. Nope, I got it. But but so as many of you know, I have a very complicated relationship with email. Uh, for many, many years, I was dealing with the Pop3 server, and now I'm over on, on Gmail. Everything's all good. Ever since the demise of Inbox, uh, for when Dropbox shut down Inbox, I've been looking for a new app. I've been using uh, a combination of Gmail as well as uh, uh, that the other one I showed a couple of weeks ago. I forgot what it was. In the, uh, it's, it's called e- – the label says email. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. Um, but this app is called Astro. And in the Google Play Store, actually, the title is Astro AI Meets Email. And what's interesting about this is that this is a beautifully designed, well-executed mail client with a AI-powered bot. So if you look in the lower right-hand corner in the action buttons, there's the compose button. But then above that is that little Daft Punk hamburger menu-looking button. And if you press that, that loads Astro, who's your uh, Astro bot. And uh, if you're into AI, if you're into bots, if you're into this kind of interaction, they have this entire thing that allows you to use it via this. So so if you type Tor, hit Tor there, it will show you – it will tell you what it can do. Tor? To T, no, not Tor. T O U R. (laughs) Oh, Tor. You typed in Tor, the browser. He said Tor. He said Tor. He didn't say Tor. T O U R, (laughs) Tor. Oh, man. He said Tor. No, we did it. He said Tor. I understood. So him. here you go. So if you hit if you hit Tor, um, hit hit Astro features, and it will show us. The, it will tell us about Astro's features, and it'll crash Google Play Music. Um, uh, so they have swipe, out. snooze, and send later. Anyway, this so anyway, it is a bot mechanism. I just wanted to show that. So you could type in you could type in um, who is Ron. Type in who is Ron Richards. It should let's see if it's if it knows you from my email. Okay, who is <laughs> Ron? Richards. Let's see if you can do this. What is their email address? Oh, all right. Well, anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to do that, Ron. Yeah. So anyway, you could do. You can talk about things. You can work with the bot on different uh, functions. You can do. Um, you could say. Um, you know, you you could say you, you you say who is an email address, and it'll give you what they know about them, but their name, Twitter, your contacts, or whatever. You could do reminders. You could say remind me to email Ron later today, right? You could do that. Um, that's an option or something you can do. Um, there you go. Let's see. Ah. So yeah. Anyway, but go back, go back. So so it's got a little okay. bot interface. That's not the whole reason why I'm showing off this app. Okay. Um. So it does have swipe. I feel like any mail client now has to have some sort of swipe ability, right? So you can swipe right, um, a little bit, and it can archive it. You can swipe left, and that will snooze it. You can change the settings on how you want to snooze, um, how long you want to snooze for. It also has an ability to send later. So what you can do is you can type an email and say, "Now send this at 11 p.m. tonight." Or whatever you know, which is which is a great function um, within there too. Um, but what really jumped out for me on this is that I've been desperately looking for a new desktop client, and all the great Android email apps, um, aside from Gmail and Inbox or whatever, especially if it's see, there, send later. You can track replies, you can track opens, all that cool stuff. Um, but what's great about this is that. Um, I'm on Mac OS and I want a desktop client that runs OS X that also syncs with what I'm doing. Astro has a desktop client for Mac OS. Um, it's not available for Windows or anything else, but it's available for Mac OS. So it works for me. Maybe it works for you. But all of the snoozes, all of the send later, everything you do with the app syncs with the desktop app. And they're completely working in tandem and it's perfect. So you can go from the same app from your phone to the desktop. And actually, uh, uh, Brian, I have a link in the doc to the far right um, with their website that goes to the, that shows the desktop uh, app. If you want to show that, maybe or not. 
Anyway, um, yeah, there it is. So what you can see there is that it's got, you know, it's available on the phone, but it's also available on the desktop. You can use the AstroBot in the desktop app if you want to. If you don't want to use the app, if you're not into chatbots or not into AI or that sort of thing, you never have to use it. You never have to open it up. That's fine. But it's a really solid email client, really well designed. Uh, the syncing is great. Um, currently right now, it only works with Gmail and Office 365, but really – Who's on any other email services other than that? <laughs> like if you have a Hotmail account or I guess Hotmail's Office 365, but if you have I an AOL have account, get, get get rid of it. I, I, I'm at the point now where if I get an email, if someone gives me their email, it's Hotmail or Yahoo, I question them. I, think, ah, mail. I don't know if I can trust you, but um, really great. I mean, unified inbox, muting, you know, folders, customizable notifications, you know, s snoozing, um, uh, snoozing email, sending later. It's got really great... Um, uh, functions as well as the advanced tracking, the send later, the reply tracking, all that fun stuff. But then it's also got the Astro Bot, which is really cool, which allows you to do reminders and you can ask questions from your emails and things like that. It's scanning your whole index of emails to learn from it and help you be that much more productive. So uh, Astro AI meets email. It's free in the Google Play Store. If you're running Mac OS, you can get a desktop app as well. Uh, very cool. I dig it. I think it's gonna. I actually think I'm gonna switch to this on both the desktop and the phone. That's how much I like it. So, there you go. Nice. It's got a nice yeah. UI. Um, yeah, it's yep. really well designed. Yeah. Part part of the reason I think the the bot wasn't working for some of the things that we were doing that should have worked is because it wasn't yeah. my email address. It was the all about Android email address. Uh, yeah. And so we get a lot of we, we get spam, but we also get emails from people that aren't you basically. Uh, yeah. So it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily sync up that way. So, uh, but very cool pick. Astro AI meets email. All right, Mateo. Everybody brace yourselves. Mateo's <laughs> coming to the arena. I think you know what's next. Mateo, go. I will go. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so, it may be correlation. It may be causation. I'm back on the show just after uh, Goat Simulator Payday has been launched. So, this is another variant of Goat Simulator, <laughs> our favorite goat-themed uh, game on the market at the moment. And this is called Goat Simula Simulator Payday. So it's a sort of crossover with another game franchise called Payday, yeah. which is all about heists and uh, robbing banks. Whereas in Payday, it's about robbing banks and bank heists. In here, in, in Goat Simulator Payday, <laughs> it's about pranks. Did you just... So, uh-huh. Yes, Ram? he headbutted a human being. Well done, Jason. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, he's back. Okay, he's not dead. Here we go. Oh, no. So this is Jason, for, for the audio listeners, Jason is now simulating the life of a goat, bumping into fences, uh, falling over sideways. It's a great goat simulator game, but has added challenges in, in it. So... Jason, if you go over to that blue terminal against the fence, uh, you can go into it, over this. to the right. Yep, that's it. So it looks like an ATM. It's a prank machine. And in your actions on the right, there's a bar button. So this is a bar there. button. <laughs> <laughs> go to the prank map. Okay, and this this. will give you a map of the world you're playing in with different challenges in terms of pranks so you can go to the chocolate factory you can go and drill for cheese you can go and mess with the ooh, police go, ooh, ooh, ooh. go mess with the police oh uh, yeah Play except set a chocolate bag on fire and put it on the doorstep ooh. so and this is the point when you set off on your mission now before you set off you'll see that at the top left of the screen you have that goat button. If you tap on that, you'll be able to cycle between different goats, which aren't actually goats. That's a dolphin in a wheelchair, that's a flamingo, and that's a camel. So you have quite a selection of animals to choose from, which are all have their own special moves. So if you're a goat, you headbutt people. If you are a dolphin in a wheelchair, you wheelie faster. <laughs> <laughs> And that, guy, that dolphin in the wheelchair rolls crazily fast. He's really, really fast. Yes. Is that a dolphin with a fish in its mouth? If you rotate the camera around, that's a flamingo or an oh. 
strange, strange bird. And if you use the jump button, the goat's jump button with the flamingo, you actually start flying. So you can fly around the map and get a better idea of the lay of the land. Oh, that's nice. So it's brought in some new, uh, new interaction models, new challenges in the game. There's a lot of collectibles in the game. Once you complete challenges, you earn coins or money, which you can then go and spend on masks so that you don't get recognized by the police. And that's pretty much the whole game in a nutshell. So the camel has a special move, which is actually spitting. The flamingo flies. <laughs> and the I'm not sure what the dolphin in the wheelchair does. <laughs> but just as in previous... Uh, <laughs> Just as in previous uh, goat simulator <laughs> applications, the physics engine is hilarious. It's never been refined just because it's so funny about what can happen. So I've managed to drive the dolphin in a wheelchair up walls. I've This is a bank robbery in action and the camel's walking in on it. The bank <laughs> robbers not, seem to not be oh interested. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I so saved you. Is, Jason is obviously a very conscientious member of society who's stopping the bank robbery with his pet camel. Oh, there we go. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're licking the bank robbers away, Jason. Well done. You know, I do what I can. So, so I mean, I, the, the, this isn't a goat. It's a camel. Like, I, know, I get that it's using the goat physics engine. This is but off I, brand. I yeah, exactly. What is yeah. this, Ron? Huh? I know, I know, it would but have been I better feel if like you got run over by the car while you were. Have doing. the goat developers acknowledge a shortcoming in the goat world, and that's why they're giving you other options. Ooh, controversial I, opinion. Ron, very, very good question. So it depends on where you're coming from very on that question. one. So if you go to Coffee Stain Studios, the the Swedish developers of this game, if you go to their page four uh, goat simulator payday, they will actually define the four animals you get to choose from as four different types of goats. And not only that, because they're involved in heists, they're actually given Italian gangster names. So the camel <laughs> is the, the camel, I believe, is called uh, <laughs> Don Pastrami. The dolphin is known as Dolph Spaghetti. The flamingo is known as Valentino Salami, and the goat yes. is known as Humphrey Ciabatta. So all <laughs> Italian food name name related gangster names. I, <laughs> Plus, Jason has licked a uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we need double what's yeah, happening right now. <laughs> so, Jeez. It is a high comedy game. Lots of entertainment for not only yourself but the rest of the family. If you Chromecast this game, uh, maybe at a party after everyone's had a few drinks, it's even funnier. Ooh. Now, sadly, we don't have the audio at the moment, but the audio to the game is pretty epic. The the game audio. Uh, so I recommend you all uh, go and download... Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. I recommend you all go and download Goat Simulator Payday. Uh. It is a high comedy <laughs> game. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> serious physics bugs in the game engine. Again, which the physics have not been refined. Which is part of the allure of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Jesus. the oh, man. comedy factor in this game is extremely high, and they've just taken it further. So, well done to Coffee Stain Studios. Uh, as soon as I noticed this game was out, I, I decided to pay them three pounds and 99 uh, pence here in the uk i see that's four dollars and 99 in uh the us and i recommend you all go and have a spin in goat woods with all these wonderful <laughs> goats or less I just, wanna, goats. I just want to know when when will it be enough <laughs> I mean, at this point now, we're going on several years of this. <laughs> you know, that, look, this is basically Grand Theft Auto with barn animals. With goats. Yeah. Or zoo yeah. animals. Yeah. It's never, it's, Ron, it's never goats enough. It's never okay? enough. Okay? Never or Never enough. It's okay. And okay, then. Yeah. You, the you can finish that. Brought, <laughs> the first time I brought Goat Simulator to the Android app arena was back in 2014. 
And I take great pride in saying I beat Phil Nickinson, who brought slack to the table. Damn. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. This was a, a long time ago. And Goat Simulator and Coffee Stain Studios have carried on delivering uh, very tongue-in-cheek updates and major updates to their games. And they're great on Androids. You don't need to have yeah, a high-end device to play this. It works fine on a Snapdragon 625 chip, whether that's in my Lenovo P2 or on the BlackBerry Key 1. It works great. So they've obviously done some very good optimizations to make that work. Fantastic. A vote for Goat Simulator Payday is a vote for guests, goats, and Gina. <laughs> I mean, it's right there the, in the word goat. It's what yeah, G stands it's right for. There. Yeah. Yeah, you got you to get the guests out of the, out of the gutter here. The goat gutter. <laughs> the goat gutter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't embolden him. Uh, awesome. Uh, goat Simulator Payday. And finally, last week's returning winner... Lawrence. Finally, <laughs> I win something in life. <laughs> Magic Carp. Um, oh, sorry. Because you guys haven't had enough of Pokemon in this life. Uh, have you guys seen Pokemon Magic Carp Jump? No. It's by the Pokemon Company. It is a game where Magic Carp, the most pathetic of all Pokemons, the weakest of all Pokemons, has its own game. So what I'm doing right now on screen is I am eating little food around my little aquarium where. Magikarp lives to kind of, you know, uh, take care of his his uh, hit points because we just had a little little uh, battle. All that Magikarp does in this game is jump. You will see other Pokemon come visit you. You will be fighting other Pokemon, but you'll be fighting Pokemon with a Magikarp. So just kind of understand what you're getting into here. This is a game that's all about Magikarp, and it's... It's incredibly simple to play. It's just kind of one of those games. If you don't have time for a full Pokemon battle, is all you it? gotta do is make Magikarp jump. Um, you do have to train Magikarp because this is not a Gyarados we're talking about here. This is a Magikarp, pre-evolution. Mm -hmm. It is very, very weak. And of course I have won this jump because I have been training my Magikarp. Of course you have. And um, I just won some stuff now. Is this an official Pokemon game? Yes, it's from the Pokemon Company. Which is not Nintendo. No, which is not Nintendo. It does contain ads and has in-app purchases, but it's free to download. Hmm. It's called Magikarp Jump. It's called Pokemon colon oh. Magikarp Jump. And all you have to do is jump the highest. <laughs> With your unevolved Magikarp, the weakest and most pathetic Pokemon... Of all the Pokemons. Oh, and also you can customize the different Magikarps that you catch. So you can like you can create a whole. I don't have any Magikarps to show on here besides this one. Are they going to create um, one of these games for every different type no, of Pokemon? No, only Magikarp because oh. Magikarp is, again, the weakest, most useless Pokemon unless you evolve it into a Gyarados. Oh, of course. Of course. Come on, Jason. You do Come that. Come on, Jason. How long has this game been around? I don't know. <laughs> so, Flo, when is it that Magikarp jumping is going to become an Olympic discipline? You know, Pokemon should right, become right, an right, Olympic discipline. Right when goat bank robbery is. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Olympic? Ghost Simulator will have the same uh, bad hack as Grand Theft Auto Vice City. What was the hack? <laughs> Too soon? It, oh. Oh, maybe I missed it. Is it Vice City? I don't, I don't remember know. what city it was. Uh, <clears throat> I missed that video game news. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's multiplayer, so it wouldn't be an issue with Goat Simulator PD. But once don't worry, your goats are safe with that game. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to vote for your favorite app of the week. Is it Stealth Audio Player? Is it Astro AI Meets Email? Is it Goat Simulator Payday? Or is it Magikarp? Jump. I think you know what the real answer is. Go to triple A poll three two zero and place your place your vote. We're back to straw poll, something that we used a long time ago. So long time, all about Android uh, listeners and viewers will either be happy about this or are probably scratching their head, going, "What on earth well, did you do?" A, and it's a and it's important to note that straw poll has added IP detection, so there, I cannot depend on India to help me win. So don't worry, no shenanigans. Vote, <laughs> vote with your heart. Vote with your, uh, vote with your dollars. 
Uh, what did Brian vote for? What did this you vote like for live reaction <laughs> yeah. time is yeah. giving me kind yeah. of the jitters a little bit. It's kind of cool. I had to go with the goat, Ron. The goat. I figured you go with the goat. Uh, I mean, he always goes. It with was the a goat. tough call. Yeah. Almost went with Magic Carp. Yeah. Almost went. Yeah, so we're we're hoping, anyways, that there's no shenanigans on Straw Poll. We'll check in on it next week. There is see, common sense. Uh, see how how it goes. Yeah, I don't know. We're there. Our, our our poll thing is up in the air, but we're we're figuring it out. Trying to make it accessible to everyone, but still keep it fair. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, that's it for this week. Thank you, by the way, for letting me wear your beautiful necklace for the last part of this episode. Um, it's it's fantastic. I appreciate it. Uh, Man- Mateo manifest Doni. your destiny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never taking it off. This brings me good luck, apparently. Uh, Mateo, thank you so much for jumping on, and especially last minute tonight. We really appreciate it. Well, oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure being on All About Android. It's great to get you on. Uh, what do you want people to know? What are What are you working on these days? So um, I'm still writing news and looking after the Cool Smartphone podcasts uh, over on CoolSmartphone.com, uh, and I'm. You can also follow me on Twitter at Todoleo. So that's pretty much it from me, uh, apart from the fact that I started working for what was my former employer again. So I'm back at Skyscanner. Nice. Uh, What goes around comes around. Essentially, yes. (laughs) So I'm back at Skyscanner uh, in a significantly different role, but back at the the company. So uh, more travel involved, hopefully soon. Speaking of travel, I'll be in California in December, uh, according to our travel plan. So I, I hope, hopefully, we'll see you soon. Absolutely, let me know. Uh, you know, standing or uh, standing uh, request always, of course. But uh, anytime you're in the area, let us know. We'll bring you in the studio. Love having you on. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right, Flo, what are you working on other than giving me your necklace forever and ever? Right? My mother-in-law gave me that, though. Oh, okay, all right, fine. I'll <laughs> keep it forever and ever. What else are you working on? <laughs> um, I'm just working over at Android Central, you know, doing things, writing stuff. Mm-hmm. AndroidCentral.com. Mm-hmm. You want to see what I'm up to? Twitter and Snapchat at oh, that flow. It's kind of chilling. Oof. I'm not going to be Whoa. here next week. Oh, okay. FYI. Oh, that oh, flow not will to, not, not be f- here next week. No, I know I'm going to miss you next week, Flo, but I, I listened to you on another podcast today, you did. actually. You did. <gasps> I did. Was it? I was on uh, Yoga for the Revolution, which is a podcast about yoga in in our current state of time. And uh, I was on it talking about my relationship with technology and, your, and yoga and how I try and balance the two. So check it out. Uh- Check it out at yogafortherevolution.org. It's nice. a great podcast. You should subscribe to it if you're looking for ways to decompress in this very stressful world that we're in. Thank you, Ron, uh, uh, for that. You're welcome. It's a great show. It's a good podcast. Finding that <laughs> podcast. <laughs> um, I actually had a, a ton of fun doing that podcast. It was, um, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I, and I actually did listen to it, and it was actually really good. It was actually really uh I, I, I enjoyed it. It was a nice 30 well, minute little conversation with Flow. So if you, if you want to go more in depth in the world of Flow, <laughs> go to yogafortherevolution.org. So. Uh, and then, Ron, in your spare time, when you're not doing yoga, what are you doing? Oh, man. I'm just not, it's a nonstop with the podcast. But yeah, so uh, go to damnfinepodcast.com where me and Tom Merritt are enjoying the new season of Twin Peaks. Brian, are you have you caught up? Are you current? I'm all caught up. It's getting Hello. pretty exciting. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Hello. Jackpot. Yes, Mr. Jackpot is the is the most and and Wally Brando and Mr. Jackpot are the two best parts of Twin Peaks so far. Uh, Wally Brando played by Michael Sarah right there. Uh, so go to Dan Fine Podcast. We're having a great time. That comes out every Sunday night, Monday morning, right after the new uh, parts air on Showtime. And of course, you can go to ifanboy.com where we're talking about all the great comic books uh, every week, as well as comic book movies. And in fact, I'm going to see Wonder Woman this Thursday, and we're going to have a podcast about the new Wonder Woman movie, which looks to be pretty good. So very excited about that. And then, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at RonXO. Nice. Uh, yeah, I want to check that out. I'm very curious to hear how that movie is. Uh, Brian, what about you? Uh, well, I don't actually have a camera, so it's just pointing towards the stack. All right. He's over yeah. there. Hey, chat room. I can We're pointing at you. Over there. Uh, so I know last week I teased that we were going to do the Raspberry Pi thing on screensavers. Thank you for pointing, guys. Feel, <laughs> Everyone's I pointing. Very Mateo's getting in on it, too. Yeah. Uh, Ron? No. 
Ron doesn't care. Oh, there you <laughs> go. <I'm playing. laughs> right over there. Thanks, guys. Uh, I know I teased the Raspberry Pi thing last weekend, but it got pushed to this weekend. So I promise uh, <laughs> if you're wanting to do the Raspberry Pi NES project, and good news, Raspberry Pi 3 uh, runs PlayStation and N64 games really well. So Woohoo! I was pretty stoked about that. Uh, but you can watch that on Screensavers or on Know How, which I do on Thursdays with Padre. You got it running the 64 games? Yeah, so oh, I might have, have to, to talk. Yeah, yeah, it runs pretty well. Although Goldeneye, I have to yeah. play with, but apparently you can overclock the Raspberry Pi. But you gotta do some proper cooling and stuff. Right. So I have to test that out. Yeah, all right, we'll talk. So about Brian's that. doing my work. That's why <laughs> he's doing your work for you. No, no, no. Diet. Brian's doing more research. Oh. More research. Yes. Yeah. So that way you know. <laughs> Yes. The Thank more you. you know how. Do, 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 do. Uh, you can find me at jasonhowell.net. There you are. Uh, yellowgoldmusic.com. And yeah, it's really about it. You're here for this show, though. So thanks for joining us. We always love having you on. Uh, and that is it for this week. Leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. You can send us an email or video mail at AAA at twit.tv. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. We are at Android Show. Uh, we have a subreddit, twitaaa.reddit.com. You can post some of your favorite stories there, and we'll uh, search there for story ideas for the show and we'll talk about them. Show notes and past episodes at twit.tv slash aaa. You can also find uh, past episodes on YouTube, iTunes, Pocket Cast, all over the place where podcasts are found. And you can catch us live every Tuesday starting at 5.30 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. That's it for this week. We'll see you all next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye! <laughs>